Hello, welcome to my tutorials of all Chopin's etudes for piano. Today, Opus 10, number 10. This etude is, as Hans von Bülow said, if it's played correctly, then it's the most difficult of all Chopin's etudes. And I think I agree with him. But what does it really mean to play it correctly? This is a problem. First of all, I strongly recommend you to watch my analysis of this etude where I explain very thoroughly and deeply um, what is written here and how Chopin wanted it to be played. Of course, we know it from the very carefully written everything that he wrote here, considering articulation and accents, is written here. and. This is the true difficulty, to do everything that Chopin did. Um, when this etude is not played correctly, it's simply you play the notes and you don't care too much about uh, what's really written, then it's easy, then it's not that difficult. Uh, for pianists, unfortunately, I would say that 80, 90 or even 95% of pianists just don't care what is written here. And it makes me personally very, very sad, especially since I, I work so hard spending hundreds of hours on this etude to make it like Chopin wanted. And there is somebody else who doesn't do it and plays it. And sorry to say, there are some even Chopin competition winners and you can find their interpretation from Chopin competition first stage. Uh, I will not mention any names, but if you are intelligent and can hear, then you will find it. They don't do it and they still have a career and are uh, assessed by the jury in the highest points, which I personally don't understand. Um, but well, maybe, maybe I'm too much, but now I want to explain what I really mean. This attitude is... Um, we have one theme that is Chopin is changing constantly throughout this etude and this theme is, is this very simple melody this uh, on the scale right we have and if you watch this video you know this etude so you know what I mean and now what it really is here written we have grouping which is different and accents which um, we have to find the true meaning the true meaning is and and the true difficulty of this etude is to be able to play the same very theme in many different ways and now first let's just talk about these ways how Chopin wrote them and then later I will talk about how to practice this etude so first of all, the beginning we have triplets, and it means, and Chopin writes accents here. Of course, we cannot play like this because it's not beautiful, but it means that the melody should be in the upper, upper register, upper, upper voice. So like this. right here and then in bar number nine we have the total opposite and suddenly the thumb is the finger you see uh, this is a huge difference it sounds like different music but notes are exactly the same it's written exactly the same way, so if I don't care, I can play the same way. You know, it's how easy it is to play it fast, for a concert pianist, of course, to play it fast when you don't care about it. You can, you can play as fast as you, as you possibly can imagine effortless, of course, when you practice, which I will show you how to do it. But when you really want to do this at first and then this then it's
it gets very hard. And here, the next is, is the staccato, which also is something a little different. So that's the true meaning of this etude. And that's what we, in my opinion, should um, demand from ourselves or from our students. Absolutely necessary. And it doesn't matter if somebody doesn't play it, even if it's the best pianist in the world. Chopin is writing here, so we are bound to respect what he wrote. That's my opinion. Okay, but now let's practice. Let's, I, I will show you how to approach this attitude and what kind of practicing use and techniques, what kind of practice techniques use to make it easier. So first of all, there are some, maybe you, maybe you already know it, but maybe some of it that I will show you will be something new for you, I hope. I started this attitude from playing like this. like this. Of course, hands separately is a must, because here left hand is playing fast, right hand is playing fast, so it's very important, right? So again... This is a very important exercise uh, that, first of all, helps you memorizing the right hand immediately, because you have all the time the same pattern. And that's how it is written. But then, when you can play like this, then you have to care very much of these triplets. And so at first I strongly recommend to exaggerate or even start playing only these six notes. Where we have this, this melody hidden. Don't play the thumb too much. When you can do it, exaggerate the upper note. So that you can hear the melody in the upper note. Uh, of course, it's only for practicing for um, exaggeration a bit. The next very important exercise that I was using is playing only the lower voice, so only uh, fingers one and two. a very important exercise and you you should make it to tempo so and so on uh, the whole attitude also always focus and and be absolutely sure um, when we have triplets and when we have double notes because sometimes it can be tricky especially um, in the second page when when Chopin is changing it a little bit more often than at the beginning. Uh, the next very important exercise is... And also I recommend to use a little bit of the wrist. Um, Are triplets, right? So ta 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 one two three 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 one
left hand also a problematic now how to i recommend this exercise stop and then play the first note staccato then prepare all the three fingers here so that they are prepared and then don't move your hand anymore stop 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 prepared stop prepared stop prepared stop prepared stop prepared right and if you cannot prepare all the fingers here which can happen if you don't have control of your fingers then just play the chord You have to prepare all the four fingers if you play the if you play the chord okay now the next uh, when you can play left hand alone or right hand alone you start to play together i recommend not to playing from the score memorize even one bar and then try to immediately play on one bar only for example let's play from the, the first bar until the first note of the second bar because we need these connections so play right hand first left hand second and that's it and then slowly even even maybe staccato or non legato would be better because then you have the impulse for every single note you teach your hands where they should play together they play together all the time but but which fingers are playing together like this And stop and again and stop and relax and run one more time For, at the beginning when you put the hands together don't think about accents don't think about triplets don't think about anything else you should practice and learn one thing at a time because otherwise you get frustrated if you want to do the dynamic a triplets and left hand softer right hand louder and the, the, the accents, everything together at the same time, it's impossible for our brain and it's just too difficult and too frustrating. So one thing at a time. First, you coordinate two hands together without dynamic, without the triplets, just like this. When you can do it and you feel free, then there are two options. Either you go to the next bar and you play. Right? Sorry. Until here, on the one bar. And then. Hands together. And stop and relax. Always remember stopping, relaxing, one bar and at a time. Because when you play this etude and you don't know it so well, you are learning it, you simply you get tensed immediately. This is not good. It will stay forever with you if you do it. So you have to get rid of this as soon as possible. The best is at the beginning. Uh, so as I said, first you can learn the whole phrase or when you know one bar very well, you can add the triplets, for example. <laughs> Well, this is how I practice that actually, right? And then you add the crescendo because it's written by Chopin. And left hand legatissimo and piano. Right hand is doing the crescendo, the right hand alone. So. And you see the difference between this and bar number nine is fundamental. Look. Right, it's, a, it's like a different music as I said before. So, this is how I recommend to get slowly to, to tempo and uh, learning one bar at a time, then maybe put two bars together, then four bars together. Don't be afraid of spending one hour on two lines. Uh, the more you repeat a very short part, the better it is for your improvement. So now 
it's not the end of difficulties here, right? As you know, if you play this etude, you are probably waiting for me to show you what to do in bars 43, 44, 40. So this one. <laughs> kind of different uh, difficulty that we have to solve. First of all, as you could notice, I'm not really looking on this this um, bass note, which is a problem to jump with the left hand. You have to learn. How to reach this note without looking. And what is the best way? Well, this is not that hard because this note is, mm, I mean, here we have two white keys. So it makes it a little easier to, to find when you know the topography of the keyboard and the fingering, everybody has to decide, but I, I like to just go like this. And I'm playing this bass note with virtually with three fingers put together two or three fingers put together then I don't care which finger I will reach the note one of them will surely reach the note right so uh, usually it's two three and four together definitely I'm not playing the, the fifth poor little pinky because it's just too small so if you put them together, you have more chances that you just hit this note, but you have to do... The, the hand has to go a little bit like this. So, of course, first learn the left hand without looking here. You see, I can't... My, my movement is always the same. You can also do like this and stop and check if you touch this. Stop and check. And you have to repeat. And now very important thing, my friends. If you want to hit this note 100 times on 100, 100, 200, you know what I mean? Then what you have to do is you have to repeat the good movement many times. So when you can do it, just repeat it. Because this is how we are learning. This is how we are teaching our hand the precise movement. Yes, 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 yes. You see? I practiced like that before, so that's why now I'm so... <laughs> uh, I'm so comfortable with this. But this is very important. Because the right hand alone has a very difficult part, so we should not... use spend too much energy looking at the base of the left hand. Now this part, first of all, of course, very good exercises like this. And now here. And now, you know, you see, it's not enough to just play like this. You have to be careful of the movements of your hand. What I mean is, look, and all the three fingers immediately are prepared. So you don't move them after. They are prepared. Prepared. Then here. So prepared. 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 And not only one, all three of them has to immediately touch the correct keys. There is no time here to make any correction. You know what I mean? It's focus now. You cannot do and like this. After, after, if you if you don't hit this, it's too late for you. So you have to start from a slower movement and put all the three fingers exactly here. And this is the most important thing, the, the, the exercise that you can also do hands together like this. When 
you practice like this, never play the chord before all the three fingers are not on the keys. And later, play slowly and never play. There is another difficulty that I found out now when you go down. This. You see? You should not, don't try to make legato here. Because it will never work. Instead of legato, play staccato the thumb and then go here, like this. All the three notes. Stop. This is another exercise now. Let's talk about bars from 45 up, like this. Stop and prepare, and then prepare. Stop. 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 And so on. Always have your fingers prepared for on the on the keys. This is um, it is the hardest, of course. And the left right hand you have to learn alone in the fast tempo. That's all I think. Let's talk about the ending. Of course, here we have a few wider parts like this. Of course, we have to play staccato with pedal. So like staccato and faster. But no problem, my friends, because here we also can slow down a little. It's very beautiful to do it. No worries about it, just do it and don't don't think that it's wrong or not allowed. You can take time as much as you want to play it beautifully and clean. The end of this is also very similar. Before you play the chord, have your fingers, all three fingers on the chord. This way I never play dirty. And another thing is that here it's more sando and diminuendo, which means that we can go slower, you don't have to play it extremely fast this ending. And you see, you can see. First be sure that all the three fingers are on the keys and then play like this. How to make it to tempo? Hands separately. If you want to reach, let's say, tempo 140, learn one, one, uh, right hand 150, left hand 150, and then put them together, starting from, of course, slower and going faster and faster, playing smaller parts at a time. One bar, two bars, four bars. Oh. Stop. And different tempos. And relax faster. And so on. This is also very helpful and I think uh, it's saving the time also. The most challenging for this etude for me was memorizing it, uh, especially because I was doing it every hand alone. But since I did that every hand alone, then I'm not afraid of my memory here. And I, I just feel secure and comfortable. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, write them down uh, under on the commentary se section or on my email, which is also written under this video. Thanks a lot for watching and good luck with this very difficult attitude and please play everything that Chopin wrote. Let's change uh, this tradition of playing this etude wrongly and showing the world that it doesn't matter if we play what Chopin wrote or if we, if we don't. Thanks for watching until now. Bye bye.